Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial on the Shadow Impact Analysis solution. Shadow Impact Analysis can be used to check and calculate the shadow impact of existing and proposed buildings on other features such as a park or neighboring buildings. Now first, we will use the Check Shadows task to get a visual impression of the shadow impact of the proposed development. Use the Create Sun Positions task to calculate sun azimuth and vertical angle for the times of day that you're interested in. Name your sun feature class, set the correct time zone, and then set the date that you wish to calculate the shadows for. Hit finish and a sun positions layer is created. Next we need to set the scene illumination. Click on the check shadows scene in the contents pane and turn on shadows and set the map time. And next we're going to enable time on the sun positions layer. Select the layer in the contents pane and then click run. And then set it so each feature has a single time field and again here we need to set the correct time zone. And now we need to set the time slider. Click on the time pane in the pro menu bar and then click on the up arrow to enable time. And set the start time to the time of the first sun and the step interval to the sun time interval. And then click on the play button. This gives us a quick visual check on the shadows on this particular day. Now we can also export this animation to a movie. Click on the view pane and then click on add in the animation section. And then we can import the time slider steps. Now if we want to add overlay text to our movie, we need to select all the keyframes at the bottom. You can hold the shift key, to select them all. And then we can add the overlay text such as the map tile. Now you can configure the overlay text by going to the properties. And then you can position it and set the font size. And in this case, for example, we only want to show the start time and not the end time. Hit the X to close the overlay text box. Then we can set the duration of our animation and hit play. Now this looks good, so let's export it to a movie. A number of formats are supported, uh, YouTube, Vimeo, and you can also export locally to your own drive. Now we can also export sequential images if need be. You need to select your image format and then set the frames per second to 1 and set the duration of the animation to the number of keyframes. And this gives us individual images for each of the sun positions. Now next we would like to do a more thorough and analytical and cumulative shadow analysis. Click on the evaluate shadow task to get started. And please note that the rest of the video was captured with an earlier version of the solution which didn't include the check shadows functionality. And again here we're going to calculate the sun positions or you can copy the sun layer that you created earlier in the check shadows task. Next we will create shadow panels for the observer feature. Start with larger panel sizes first to test the workflow and then select your obstruction features such as the surrounding buildings, trees. Now 
toggle use observer features as obstruction on if your observer feature can cast shadows. For example, the observer is a building. But in this case, it's a park, so we'll leave it off. Now the result is a panel feature class showing shadow hours on the observer feature. Now typically, we want to know what the potential shadow impact of a proposed building is. So we will run the analysis again, but now with the proposed development as obstruction as well. And make sure your output um, is a different name than the previous feature class. The results is a panel feature class showing shadow hours for the observer feature with the proposed development. And now we can visually compare the two shadow layers and see the difference. But to get a better indication of shadow difference, we can run the compare shadows task. Enter the existing shadows as base features and the proposed shadows as test features. And then we can see that in the top corner, there is more than three hours extra shadow. And behind the tree, of course, there is no extra shadow because the tree is there in both scenarios. Now finally, we can calculate the area that will get more than a set number of extra shadow hours using the Calculate Shadow Area task. And then we can see that there in the top corner, the red area, that area will receive more than three hours or two hours of extra shadow. Now we can run the same analysis for streets and also building features. Now here I pre-calculated the existing shadows, the proposed shadows, the comparison between the two, and the area that will get more than two hours extra shadow. And as you can see, this is basically the whole street front facade of the building. So now we're ready to publish our shadow results. We can publish to Portal for ArcGIS or ArcGIS Online. And in this case, we'll publish to ArcGIS Online. And we'll do the existing shadows on the park area. Now first, we will create a scene layer package, and then we share this package to ArcGIS Online. The package is created and then we'll upload the package to our ArcGIS Online account. Enter a summary, enter tags, and hit run. So let's go to our ArcGIS Online account. There we have a scene layer package. You click on it, and then you can hit publish. And this will turn our scene layer package into a hosted scene layer. And then we can have a look at it in uh, our scene viewer. Here we have a pre-existing scene. We can search for the layer that we just created, and then we add it to the scene. So this is our existing shadows in the park without the proposed development. And then using the slide functionality, we can show the proposed development. We can show the shadows as a result of the proposed development shadow difference, more than two hours of extra shadow because of the proposed development, 
and the same for the filling. And once we've authored a scene, we can save it and share it with others in our organization in the public. And we're done. Thanks for watching.